as always, it is a pleasure being with you each and every morning right here on Y254. This is Y in the Morning. My name is Ram Aguko, and as always, it is a pleasure. Hoping that you're well this particular Monday morning. Hoping that you're healthy and fine. Now, today we want to talk about national values and principles of governance. And uh, in this particular conversation, we want to talk about the role of government in promoting national values. Now, according to uh, the uh, Constitution, under Article 132, 1C of the Constitution, uh, it provides that the President of the Republic of Kenya shall once each and every year report uh, in an address to the nation on all the measures taken and the progress achieved in the realization of national values, uh, according to uh, that are referred in Article 10 of the Constitution. Now, the President is further required to publish in the Kenya Gazette the details of the particular report. Now, today, we want to talk about the role of national government in, in promoting national values and how far are we so far as a country. Remember, we had the state, state of the nation address a few weeks ago, and uh, you know, did you take note of that particular uh, part in the state of the nation address? Well, this particular Monday morning, let's talk about the role of government in promoting national values. And to help us in this particular conversation, I am joined, uh, I am with Edward Nyongesa. He is uh, the acting director of the Directorate of National Cohesion and values that is found under the uh, the uh, uh, Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. Karibu sana Nyongaza. Kusalama. Salama sana. Thank you, Ram, and uh, thank you for having me on this. Uh Station this morning yeah. to talk about national values. Thank you so much, my it's brother. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Uh, remember to engage with us if at all you're watching us from home. Uh, the hashtag is Y in the morning at Ram Aguko and at Y254 channel is the handle. Remember, we are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Engage with us. Let us know where you're watching us from and I shall sample your feedback a bit later on during this particular morning conversation. All right, so uh, let's uh, start this particular conversation and uh, I would like to start with uh, by mentioning that you know in regards to this particular uh, conversation we shall talk about the uh, compliance uh, so far. How, what are we doing uh, in regards to uh, promoting it, mainstreaming it, the enforcement of national values, evaluation and reporting of this particular uh, uh, issue. So, Bwana to, uh, to kickstart this particular conversation, I want to start with uh, the Director of National Cohesion and Values. What is the role uh, that is there in the Directorate and how does it come in play when it comes to the government's role in promoting national values? Uh, thank you, Ram. I should begin by saying, uh, in promoting national values and principles of governance, the role of government will be to promote these values and uh, to enforce. That means to follow up and see that institutions are complying with the, the provisions in the constitution as regards national values and principles of governance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the Directorate of National Cohesion and Values is established uh, by an executive order as part of the executive arm of government, now domiciled in the Ministry of Interior, mm -hmm. uh, whose uh, primary mandate, in, as far as this discussion is concerned, mm -hmm. is to coordinate the measures to promote the national values and principles of governance. Mm -hmm. That means we work through programs, uh, through activities, and through coordination. And uh, to do this, uh, we have a, a coordinated development of a, a, a policy, now mm -hmm. a session of paper number, uh, number eight of 2013, mm -hmm. on national values and principles of governance. Uh, this policy outlines what needs to be done, uh, the aspirations that we have as a people to entrench national values within our society, mm -hmm. and it apportions responsibility across all agencies and, 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 and organizations. Mm -hmm. And therefore, where we sit as a, a directorate, uh, we are responsible for uh, seeing that institutions in the various mandates are mainstreaming the promotion of national values. Where we sit, we are also responsible for coming up with programs uh, that will enhance the promotion uh, through 
directly by ourselves and especially most of it is through other government agencies uh, as far as outlined in the policy. Therefore, there are many programs we are doing, uh, but uh, I can mention some of them at the moment, including uh, mainstreaming the promotion of national values through government agencies. Uh, through this program, we have uh, managed to have this promotion as part of the uh, targets that public agencies undertake every year. Through performance contracting, organizations are required to commit that in this financial year, we will perform our tasks up to this level. They set targets, and that's what is measurable, to ensure that everybody is working and giving account of what they do. So we have loaded the mainstreaming of values in each of those mandates, regardless of what uh, primary mandate an agency is supposed to do, there are targets that we set every year that will help them mainstream, that as they do what they do, they are also in that process uh, carrying along awareness on national values and promotion of national values, both within the organization and among the stakeholders that they serve out there. And then they give account every year by submitting a report, and then we are able to evaluate. So we've got entities that um, you really look into. Uh, in t I, I don't know how um, you, you do it. Is it in terms of supervision? Is it in terms of follow-up? How do you, you know, work with these particular entities and ensure that you know, they uh, are uh, up to par when it comes to promoting national values? The word is not supervision. I think it's coordination. 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 So it's because what? Uh, what we do, we set the target mm -hmm. that we expect the agencies to do the following. Uh, which may include awareness creation, which may include uh, uh, promoting that mandate they are doing in a manner that they will amplify the values. And then along the way, as a directorate, we follow up to enhance the capacities of these agencies uh, by way of uh, getting a focal point person in those agencies. And once a focal point person is appointed, we also follow up to ensure that they have committees within those agencies to do that. And our role will be then to enhance the capacity of those committees and those focal point persons through training programs. We periodically uh, convene training programs uh, at which we mm -hmm. go over and uh, highlight what it takes for them to deliver on that mandate. Mm -hmm. And we get feedback during that time if mm -hmm. there are areas that require intervention, if there are areas that require uh, coordination with other agencies, we do that. And uh, after the periodic reporting, we also get an annual report from every agency mm -hmm. to, on the extent to which they have achieved uh, the targets that we set. So, so, so um, uh, what period of year are we, are we looking into, apart from the annual report? Um, uh, 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 what are the intervals that uh, you have so far? Uh, is it different for different institutions, or do they? Uh, how is the compliance when it comes to these particular reports? The the final output is the annual report, mm -hmm. but in between there, I pointed out. Mm. I want to point out that unlike the other performance contracting targets where they make quarterly reports, yes, on the target on promoting national values, uh -huh. we just get one annual report. One annual, okay. Uh, but uh -huh. in between, through uh -huh. our interactions, because like we will be seeing later, when mm. we track the annual president's reporting, mm. we have occasion where we meet at the beginning of the year with the focal point persons to agree on uh, whether we are comfortable and we understand the, what the target we have set for that year entails. Mm -hmm. uh, in between there, we have a convergence of focal point persons through mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. and then we also use that opportunity to get feedback on how the promotion is getting along. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then eventually, before we start receiving the reports, we also converge with all the focal point persons mm -hmm. to agree on how that reporting is going to be done. Mm -hmm. So during these interaction periods, uh -huh. we have opportunity to get feedback on how the promotion is getting along before we finally get the report at the end, at the end of the, of the reporting year. circle. Ah, all yes. right, all right. Now, let's look at the different in institutions that are there. And I would like to start with the public, uh, you know, public sector, uh, public institutions, rather, mm -hmm. uh, that are there. And uh, what institutions do we have in the country that have been set in place that help the government in, in promoting national values? And here, we're talking, let's re refer to the public institutions. Okay. Hmm. I think the, for public institutions, the first one is the presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, Article 131, you referred to the constitution, 
confers that responsibility of tracking and reporting on national values to the, to the office of the president, which requires that the president shall once every year, in an address to the nation, report on all measures taken and progress achieved in realization of national values. Therefore, the highest responsibility is placed on the president, mm -hmm. and uh, that way the president coordinates the entire government, and that is where we come in RAM as mm -hmm. a directorate, mm -hmm. uh, working at the behest of the president uh, to facilitate that reporting. Mm -hmm. So it is on that uh, article, that 131, where the president should report that that is delegated to our directorate to enable him, and that's why we get uh, input from all institutions, and then we compile to enable, the, to enable the president report. And that was done uh, important, importantly because the president as the head of, of state, mm -hmm. the symbol of national unity, has the highest responsibility over anything that gets done in the country. And so that is how values are important, that it must be the president who should take responsibility. And therefore that way he causes all government agencies and that's why it has been very easy for us to get these reports and to get the cooperation and uh, participation of all government agencies because it's a presidential mandate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that way we are able to track and see how well we are doing. Uh, but, but, but let me cut it short yes. there. Even, even as you proceed, let us know how do you ensure compliance and enforcement of this? Now, ensuring, I think that's something we will do we have done a national survey mm -hmm. on the status. We did the first one in 2015, came out 2016. That was the baseline, the very first one, mm -hmm. uh, which was following on uh, since the institution of uh, the introduction of values in 2010 through the constitution. What, where are we by that time? Yeah. So we projected that uh, every so five years. So in this year, we intend to do another survey, and this survey is the one that will tell us across government, across the, the, the nation of Kenya, through all the sectors, counties, regions, where are we? So that will be a telltale uh, report that we are waiting to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But before then, the annual reporting is a, an indicator for us because we get feedback from the, 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 the institutions and that tells us, and the, analyzing those reports will tell you uh, where, uh, what is happening and perhaps where there is a lot that needs to be put in. Mm -hmm. But that is just as far as government is co concerned. Okay. We need to do more. That's why when we do a national survey, we will get to know what is happening among the other actors other than the state agencies. What about the other civil society? What about the, the, the citizens, the private citizens out there? And that's where we would want to see. But meanwhile, through our other programs, we also have uh, engagement through the civil society. Uh, we have worked with civil society organizations, including RAIA, including... Uh, faith-based organizations, mm -hmm. including um, youth organizations. So in our interactions, to some extent, we get to know uh, what's happening. But I think a national survey will be the, 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 the stop, one stop point at which we will get feedback on all those sectors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love what you're saying because now through that particular national survey, you're able to get the, the, the data. Yes. And the statistics in, uh, that are very specific. Uh, to help you to be able to, uh, you know, make future plans on uh, and any adjustments that are there that can be able to, you know, promote national values. Yes. Now, um, um, in terms of enforcing this particular issue in the particular in all these institutions, um, that one can help. But I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, for example, the EACC the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Uh, you know, how do you engage this particular institution when it comes to promoting national values? Because uh, um, corruption has been a very big challenge in the country, and it has, uh, you know, led to so many, uh, you know, vices, and uh, it has brought up many challenges in the country in terms of governance and leadership and, and, and development in the country. Uh, thank you, Ram. I think as far as the EACC, I think that's one of the government agencies that is critical in the monitoring compliance uh, of uh, Kenyans with the national values. And the EACC Ethics and, uh, and the Corruption Commission will be speaking directly to the values uh, under uh, good governance, transparency and accountability. Mm. And here we are talking about values of integrity, we are talking about uh, transparency and accountability. And these agencies, by their mandate, are uh, required to 
to ensure that ethical conduct among public officers is upheld. And uh, when it is not done, it's their work to investigate, to mm -hmm. find out uh, the extent to which violations have been done mm -hmm. and to enforce by uh, forwarding evidence to the ODPP and further on for prosecution. So the ESCC, by their mandate, mm -hmm. helps uh, government and our society to enforce the values of integrity, uh, transparency and accountability in as far as uh, utilization of public resources is concerned, uh, accounting for uh, public assets. We've seen cases where even land meant for public use, where it has been grabbed by individuals or mm -hmm. converted to other use other than what was intended. We have seen the EACC recover uh, some of these assets from Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Even monies that have been stashed out of uh, Kenya or in private accounts, we have seen them track and trace those resources and restore them uh, to the Kenyan public. And therefore, the ESCC is critical in uh, enforcing uh, values that touch on uh, that part of uh, the, the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Integrity, uh, transparency and accountability, uh, and even sustainable development. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but uh, uh, but now, now uh, in terms of... Um sustainability uh, you know how, how far is it that uh, we have come and uh, do you see the effectiveness of uh, of this particular institution many Kenyans complain um, at, at some point but I know that there, there are reports that uh, it has to give when it comes to promoting national values and how far they have come but uh, you know how do you uh, you know um, uh, uh, how do we go about it to ensure that at the end of the day the ESEC has managed to uh, you know fight this vices in the society because there are challenges that it, it is facing that are within the public domain. Ram, it's not in our place to assess the effectiveness mm -hmm. and the uh, ESCC have spoken for themselves many times. Yes. And I've listened to what they have done and uh, they have given a very good account of the amounts of money recovered, the numbers of people of convictions mm -hmm. um, among the, those who have offended the, the constitution yeah. and the laws of Kenya is a, in as far as ethical conduct is concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, where I sit, I think they are on course, mm -hmm. uh, except that, uh, of course, this is relative. Mm -hmm. We will have people always who will feel they some can do agree, better. Some will disagree. Uh, I think they can do better. <laughs> but uh. it's all right to urge them on and to we would want all of us to see yeah. an end to the mm -hmm. vice of corruption. Mm -hmm. We would want all of us to see a proper use of uh, public resources, and that is for the good of our country. Yeah. But uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, it, it has to be progressive. We have to be patient. They have uh, taken steps. They have taken steps. We can urge them on, and perhaps uh, for those who are in a position to cooperate, because you know they cannot achieve alone. Mm. Everybody has to participate. Members of the public, uh, we have the value of public participation. We all have a stake in our society. And therefore, even members of the public willing to uh, volunteer information wherever they see uh, chances and occurrences of violations of these values, I think Kenyans should be very patriotic enough to point out, mm -hmm. uh, point out to the relevant agencies and be willing to provide that evidence so that we can nab uh, these vices so that our society becomes... Uh, a better place to live in for all of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would like us to talk about the uh, uh, Kenya National Commission for Human Rights because uh, I'm aware very well that, uh, you know, human rights is uh, a very strong point when it comes to the country. We have uh, uh, people who have been fighting for human rights and uh, it has been an issue when it comes to, it is an issue when it comes to promoting national values, because it, it plays a, a, a role yes. when it comes to promoting val national values. Uh, I, I believe that is correct. Yes. And uh, now, um, how are we, uh, how do you look into the human rights now? What, what is your voice in regards to this, especially moving into, uh, moving forward to a country where human rights is going to be, uh, I, 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 human rights violation is going to be a thing of the past? Thank you, Ram. I think as far as the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights is concerned, we see it as a critical partner when it comes to tracking the values under uh, the Bill of Rights. And here we are talking about values such as uh, social justice, mm -hmm. equity, uh, human dignity, human rights, inclusivity, non-discrimination, among others. Yeah. So that those values under the promotion of the Bill of Rights 
would tie in with the mandate of the Kenya National Commission for Human Rights. Right. Because we are saying uh, government must lead, not just government, even all entities that operate in Kenya must promote those values. Wherever human dignity is undermined for any individual, for any citizen, that is a cause for concern. And uh, the commission has been very vocal in, uh, as a watchdog agency in uh, pointing out cases where we have had violations. Mm -hmm. They do uh, investigate. They do advocacy. They do awareness creation and civic education mm -hmm. uh, quite meaningfully. And so in conducting that civic education for the public to get to know about these values, for us it's a plus because that is awareness already mm -hmm. being created. Mm -hmm. And for investigations and uh, putting together evidence that would nab uh, individuals who violate those rights, even institutions who violate, because we have seen cases of institutions that are in their mandate, perhaps you setting up a factory and in the, the in how you, you don't manage your, your, your refuse, you will discharge your waste in uh, water or in uh, space around, and so we see the effect it has. On, on the lives of people that live around that place. The Commission has had uh, to voice this and point that out. And you know that is saving the integrity of the life mm -hmm. of, of the of people who live there. So we, we, we then are also, con that Commission, that way the Commission is contributing to creating uh, a society that is values best. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights becomes a critical partner for us mm -hmm. in as far as promoting values under the Bill of Rights. But, 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 but we can say that there are steps that have been uh, made yes, forward. Yes, yes. They do. They submit a report. If you look at their annual report, mm. you'll see a litany of uh, uh, measures they have taken. Mm -hmm. And uh, that to us is a contribution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Many Kenyans um, have been complaining, you know, um, and this is not a, a political question, Bwana uh, Nyongesa, but if you look at the many Kenyans that are complaining about their rights being violated, you know, we look at the, 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 the Mao evictions, we look at so many uh, people, who, the, I, the IDPs, uh, you know, um, what will be your comments in regards to, uh, to, to, to these challenges moving forward, in regards to now getting a solution and promoting national values? Uh, in the country? I think, uh, though you say it's not political, but mm. it is really, because when it comes to these evictions, we mm -hmm. have seen them in the government reserves, uh, it ends up being, uh, it ends up being uh, political. Yeah, being political. <laughs> but before Sorry. it gets to that, uh. we would want to see that the agency is responsible. Yeah, yeah the agency is responsible in terms of law and order, because mm -hmm. that is the immediate response that comes. The ministry is responsible for environmental mm -hmm. conservation. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for that. And all of these institutions are bound by our national values and principles of governance. Right, but right. But right. uh, as far as discharging your mandate, whatever it is, uh, you must operate within the provisions of the constitution. Uh, human dignity, mm -hmm. so that if you are evicting them, you are expected to do that in the context of uh, respecting the human dignity of the persons affected. Yeah, so yeah. maybe. If an interrogation was done uh, by any watchdog agency, there could be provisions, and those are the things that people will be wanting to see that they are done. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, given your voice in regards to the Commission on Administrative Justice, how far has it, uh, you know, how far is it, and uh, what is its particular role in, in, in this particular conversation? CAJ is uh, an agency established, a commission established to ensure that there is fair administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the ombudsman, I think it is the place when Kenyans are dissatisfied by service mm -hmm. from a public office, yeah. that's where they go to launch their complaint that I went to this office, uh, seeking this, office, this service, and this is what they ought to have done, but this is what happens. Yes. So the, 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 the CAJ receives complaints, and when they receive those complaints, they last with the agency to find out why that was not done. Mm -hmm. And they provide intervention. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for us where we sit, the CAJ pro, pro, promotes uh, that, that value of good governance, uh -huh. accountability. Mm -hmm. It also provides uh, an avenue when we talk about the value of uh, democracy and participation of the people. That people need to see that what they are entitled to in terms of service, they get it. Mm -hmm. So when they are not getting it, there is a, a redress mechanism. 
So that redress mechanism also provides a satisfaction that it is not all lost. If you went to an office and did not get service, uh, you don't have to go to court, mm -hmm. or it may not be a matter that you can go to court about, but there is an office you can go to and you get intervention so that your service is... The CAJ. Uh, fairness is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So CAJ is that office where uh, people will go to when there is maladministration or abuse of office by mm -hmm. uh, individuals who sit in office and they don't do what they ought to do. Mm -hmm. Individuals go to the CAJ to launch uh, complaints. Mm -hmm. And CAJ has been very effective in, uh, uh, first of all, seeking explanation. When it's not done, they interfere. I mean, they appeal to the supervising office. Mm -hmm. And uh, these interventions have resulted into efficiency in service delivery mm -hmm. and uh, satisfaction to members of the public. And, 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 and naturally promoting principles of governance. Yes. Because that's now uh, where, you know, when talking about principles of governance, we're talking about uh, government and institutions of government performing their duties to the satisfaction of the citizens. Yeah. That is now where, 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 where it meets. And therefore, CAJ becomes a critical partner mm -hmm. in promoting the principles of governance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, challenges that have been faced in regards to uh, you know, public office, as many Kenyans sometimes complain that, you know, I've, I've, I went there, it took so long, you know, waiting uh, in line. I, I had to, they, had, they had to go back home and come the next day. You know, um, during this time of COVID also, it has also been a giving us a different challenge because now instant public institutions had to go online. The shift was so big. Mm. You know, uh, giving your voice in regards to this now. Now, I think uh, this will be very, you, it's very difficult to give a, a general assessment mm -hmm. because different offices offer different services, services and you'll find uh, demand for these services will, will, will be varying. And that's why I think in devolving these services, yeah. aware that sometimes the queues get too long, mm -hmm. that's why government came up with Huduma Centers. Yeah. In a way to decentralize and spread out service points. Mm -hmm. So that through Huduma Centers, instead of crowding, for example, the ID, very many young people turn 18 every year, every day, every day. Mm -hmm. and so the demand becomes very high. So if this is only done at the office of the, the county commissioner, for example, in the county or sub-county, mm -hmm. it becomes one point and so many people converge there. And then people so, start complaining yes. that, you know, we so are that, not getting that, services. That's why when the Huduma centers came up, mm -hmm. they opened up the service points to be more, and therefore to reduce congestion at specific offices. But again, uh, it will go to the respective offices in observance of national values. Because when you talk about human dignity, somebody sitting on queue for too long, I think you are abusing that value because they <laughs> yeah. waste time and the, the dignity is diminished. Mm -hmm. So we'd want to see that uh, even government agencies review their procedures. Uh, some of the, the queues are arising from the procedures that have been put in place. Mm -hmm. You go here for a rubber stamp, you go there for another rubber stamp, mm -hmm. you go there for another rubber stamp. Uh, if the reviews, if, if, if the, the procedures can be reviewed so that all those rubber stamps are at one point, mm -hmm. you get all the three rubber stamps at one. You know, you'd mm -hmm. have already cut down on the waiting time. Yeah. So I think this is the kind of appeal we would make that are um, aware that Kenyans need to have their dignity respected mm -hmm. and uh, to save time and the, the value of good governance. That means you're enhancing service. Uh, that, uh, when you enhance it means you're more effective, more efficient, you use less time and uh, more people get served. That mm -hmm. is the kind of direction we want to, mm -hmm. to see so that now we enjoy the dignity of obtaining services in our public offices. In, in, in the institutions? Yes. I don't like long queues. Nobody they're, does. Nobody they're, does. They're annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does. Ah, but some people can be patient though. Well, yeah. Huh? I don't know, but... Uh, that, 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 that's a good move by yes. government, you know, um, because at the end of the day, Kenyans need these services. And uh, it, is, it is quite unfortunate that a Kenyan can wake up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., you know, trying to get to town so that they can be able to go to a particular institution for their services, only for them to leave that place at 4 p.m. in the evening. It's very unfortunate. Quite. Human dignity is very, very important there. Yeah. Now, um, let's look at the judiciary. And, uh, of course, it has been uh, an institution that has been uh, on the limelight 
many Kenyans have been looking at the ju ju judiciary, uh, you know, using a magnifying glass, trying to find out, you know, how how it is doing. But now, in terms of promoting national values and principles of governance, how far are we? I think for for us, the judiciary is is a, is a, is a critical agency in the line of promoting values. And uh, where we are happy about this is uh, increasingly when you listen to the judgments mm -hmm. that are coming out of court in regard to uh, people violating various cases, we have seen very many people being found guilty of violating the provisions of uh, the Constitution in as far as national values and principles of governance is concerned. Uh, even cases that touch on a public participation. Yeah. We saw recently uh, what was happening. Not that we are happy that uh, Uhuru Park renovation was stopped, mm. but just to refer to the fact that among the reasons that were cited for the suspension of the renovation process was that uh, there are allegations that uh, sufficient public participation was not was done mm. in the process, in the coming up with the proposal to uh, renovate that mm. park. That mm. is just an example. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has gone on in many other cases. We have uh, violations of values in as far as integrity is concerned, being cited as a reason for sanctioning individuals mm -hmm. and uh, sentencing them because they violated the values and principles of governance in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the judiciary becomes a critical uh, partner uh, in enforcing. You know, sometimes when we just make provisions, we know they are there and uh, nothing is done on the basis of those provisions, mm. people take it lightly. But you know, for, 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 for some, yes. I remember the president once said something similar to what I'm, I'm, I'm about to say, that sometimes Kenyans are quick to go to, to, to court, yes. misusing court. And uh, at some point, we, 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 we um, you know, end up having so many court cases about issues that at the end of the day could have promoted national values and principles of governance. Is that a right uh, assumption? Yes. If, if there is no substance, you know, you are quick to go. Mm -hmm. If there's no substance, then uh, that court case will not stand the test of time. Yeah. And I would also share in that because uh, at the end of the day, national values are supposed to be enforced by the collective will of the people. Remember when we started, we said values are... Uh, the principles mm. that guide people's decisions, people's lives. Yeah. We say that values are supposed to be part of the culture of our people. And so culture is self-enforcing. And that's where values are. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, because now from 2010, we have not come very far. They have not been entrenched yet. Before we entrench these values to become uh, self-enforcing, we will have to depend on some enforcement mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the judiciary at the moment will become a critical partner in enforcing because the people will say, so what? Yeah. They will say, so what? The, the, the provision of the, the, the constitution <laughs> is there about this is a value, yeah. integrity. But, but so what? So what if I, if I don't? So that question of so what mm. can only be answered by an effective enforcement mechanism. Of course, this enforcement mechanism is at the far end when it comes to the judiciary. Judiciary is the very last resort. We expect that before we get to the judiciary, uh, in between here, we must have engaged between ourselves, among ourselves, even with intervention. And if that fails, then mm -hmm. we must end up uh, at the judiciary as a last resort. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mm -hmm. the, the, the ruling of the, the court will be some punishment. We talk about carrot and stick. Yeah. So when the carrot has failed, we will use the stick at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is a way of enforcing and therefore others will learn, you know, the, the, the court will say, so that this serves us as a, a lesson for others, I'm sentencing you uh, to this punishment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you can give us any other institution that uh, uh, I might have not mentioned, but let me just mention one more, the, the Commission for, uh, on Revenue Allocation. Yes. The CRA. You know, um, your thoughts in regards to this, how um, is it playing? Because we are aware that uh, the, uh, you know, it, it makes recommendations concerning the uh, basis of, for the equitable sharing of revenue raised by the national government. So um, how are we going to, 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 to look at it? Because this is between the national and uh, county government. 
what is its role and how far are we in regards to this? Ram, you will remember when we were in our previous discussion, mm. when we were talking about the, the, the issues that affect uh, the perception that we are one, mm. when you talk about national unity. Yeah. Uh, one of the, the undermining factors was the perception of marginalization. That's why one of the values is uh, inclusiveness mm -hmm. and then non-discrimination. Yes. Uh, because they, they are perceptions and perhaps real uh, facts that uh, parts of this Kenya uh, feel they are not at the center, they are the periphery. Mm. So for them to feel included, that's why we have the value of equity in use of resources. So that uh, equity is a value under the, the Bill of Rights values, set of values. Yeah. And we can attain equity when people get a fair share of what is a public good and service. Mm -hmm. So this equity becomes critical and most importantly is in the share of the national resource. Uh, how do we distribute the income that we get through KRA when the, at the end of the year we are budgeting for subsequent uh, expenditure? So the CR, CRA, the Commission for Revenue Allocation, mm -hmm. is this agency within government that will work uh, with other agencies to get a formula on how do we share. Mm -hmm. And the guiding resources. principle mm -hmm. on how they share this revenue is equity. That means uh, they will find out the level of poverty uh, which differ from one county to another. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of this, they will allocate where the higher the, higher the level of poverty, mm -hmm. the higher the allocation. The allocation. So oh. the, the, that way we are catering for the, the, the vulnerable, mm. the counties that have been left behind so that they are able to catch up. On top mm. of that, it's CRA again which will uh, work on how do we share the, there is a provision in the constitution on uh, the, the, the equitable, I mean the, 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 there is some, some money given to counties and regions of this country that yeah. Uh, yeah. have lagged behind. So that is again an intervention and CRA Commission for Revenue Allocation becomes critical in promoting that value of equity so that once the people who are disadvantaged in the past see what they are getting vis-a-vis -vis what others are getting, mm. it will give them some sense of satisfaction that uh, our unique circumstances have been looked into and therefore this Kenya is a good place. We all belong to this Kenya. You, you remember there was a time that we were having, actually this was a, a very hot, heated conversation in Parliament Yes. for the CRA, the issue of one man, one <laughs> one, vo one, one vote, one shilling. One shilling. Yes. Uh, the, the, it is still there. It has not gone out. Yeah, it hasn't gone out. Yes. It hasn't ended. But, but it, it, it was so hot at some point. Right now it has cooled down a bit. I, I, I don't know. And the issue of land also, land mass was also yes. there. Uh, and it, I think it came up again in the recent uh, discussions. Yeah. That uh, it is the people, counties that are highly populated vis-a-vis -vis countries that are sparsely, sparsely populated. populated. Yeah. So that the ones that are highly populated would be comfortable with one man, one shilling, mm -hmm. uh, one vote. But the ones that are sparsely populated will be comfortable with using the formula of one, 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 is it one kilometer or one acre? Yeah, one, one, kilometer, one kilometer, one shilling. One shilling yeah. So because for them they have land, but mm. these ones have population. Yes. And that is uh, what happens in a democratic uh, space. Mm -hmm. We have discourse. And it's always good to bring them on, on, on and then give merits. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, a formula is found which will accommodate uh, both parties. And our intention is equity. In all these discussions, yeah. the underlying factor is just equity. Because we need to promote yes, these we need national to, values here. We, we, according to the need. So the question is here. Mm. These ones are saying the need is the person. Yeah. And these ones are saying the need is the area we are developing. Because we want to get <laughs> development at the end of the day. Yes. Is the denominator the person or is it the space? The, the, the area. So if I'm uh, developing this big area, uh -huh. I need resources to develop my huge county. But you have a small county. Uh -huh. So so the question is, do we use the population? Do we use the area, the size of the area? But one thing that I love, uh, yes. Director, is all these people want something good. Yes. No one wants a bad thing. No. So that's why I'm saying there is merit in both. And... Uh, at the end of the day, on the merit of the points, you know, sometimes when you listen to, because incidentally these are politicians advancing these arguments, mm -hmm. sometimes we are taken away by who is saying what. 
and therefore we want to make a judgment on the basis of the person advancing the argument rather mm -hmm. than on the merits of the case itself. Mm -hmm. I would uh, encourage Kenyans to look at uh, the merits in the case and remove the individuals that could be advancing this argument and that way we'll be able to make a very objective decision on uh, the way forward on mm -hmm. how do we equitably share resources because the intention is equity in share of uh, the scarce national uh -huh. resource. Right. Yeah. Um, well, Director, I want us to wrap this conversation. And uh, before you have a final word, Kenya, we, are cel we, we celebrated our Jamhuri Day yesterday. Kenya is now 58 years. Kenya at 58. How far are we? And maybe you can give in your voice in regards to the strength, the, you know, the, 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 the level that you have reached when it comes to promoting national values and principles of governance. I am not also going to forget that we had the state of the nation address uh, recently made by the president. Your voice in regards to this. Kenya maybe before I get to that, Ram, mm. you, we were discussing the government and there's one agency that we cannot uh, forget about. Yes, yes. Which is the Public Service Commission. Right. That Public Service Commission has a mandate under Article 234 of the Constitution mm -hmm. uh, to promote compliance with the public uh, value, with the national values under Article 10 and Article 232 in as far as public agencies are concerned. Mm -hmm. The Public Service Commission uh, monitors, they follow up and get reports from public agencies on the extent to which they are complying with the national values mm. in all in the discharge of their mandates. Therefore, their output is a key indicator because they are following up to enhance awareness in the public service and also to ensure that the public agencies are complying in the discharge of their mandates with those values. Yeah, I thought I yeah. should say that. Yeah, well. yeah. Thank you, thank you. I hope we've not forgotten any other. No, I think uh, that was the. I think I think that's the, we're good now. Yes. All right. All right. Uh -huh. Now, in as far as. Um, Assessing where we are mm. in the terms of uh, national values. I think 58 years down 58 the line. 58 years down the line, but we should not forget that uh, these national values come into the space in 2010. Yeah. So in the years before 2010, we did not have national values. And why national values was because there was a gap. And that gap was touching on the lack of the national uh, fabric as expressed by what we saw in later in early 2008, mm -hmm. that uh, there was a lack of a national fabric that holds us together as a nation. And that's why whenever there's a disagreement, we disintegrate into our ethnic identities and many times we express our ethnic nationhood. Mm -hmm. And that's why we had uh, uh, tribal clashes and mm -hmm. all that. So from 2010, we begin to work towards creating this fabric that will hold Kenyans together. Mm -hmm. And we craft our national values, which is an aggregate of uh, what is expressed in various cultures within our country. Uh, these national, 17 national values are actually an aggregate of our uh, cultural values, our mm -hmm. religious values, uh, and our societal values that would cut across and create a fabric that will yeah, identify yeah. a Kenyan. Mm -hmm. So because this is what we have from this time, I would rather, to be fair to ourselves, mm -hmm. we will be talking about since the inception of this national values. Since 2010. Then where are we and how much progress have we made? Mm -hmm. I did say that uh, our survey in uh, 2015 gave us an average of 56% awareness, mm -hmm. 56 national awareness. Mm -hmm. And this would break down differently from one region to another. I would tell you that some counties would come as low as 38, others would rise beyond 60, mm -hmm. but the average was 56. Mm -hmm. When it comes to compliance, again, different values would be complied with differently. And I'm just talking about statistics because that's what we had in 2015. Yeah, yeah, and I'm saying yeah. we are looking forward mm. to conduct another survey. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that will tell us more scientifically uh, where we are in as far as national values are concerned. But I can say for sure that we are not yet there. Uh, not yet there in as far as uh, complying with the national values and principles of governance is concerned. Yeah. Uh, that's why we still have the vice of corruption. And that is why we still have society that will stand aside and observe uh, violations take place. Many times uh, people will be in a matatu and would encourage their, the, the driver mm -hmm. to overlap. 
they would encourage the driver when they have been stopped by a matatu mm. and uh, they feel we are getting late. Come police and attack and party. And that's a lack of, of national values. And, and as long as we begin to see this, mm -hmm. I think we have work to do. You've reminded me of what happened, a very sad incident yes. that happened in uh, River Enziu. Yes. According to the um, to, to some reports, uh, the driver was claiming that you know that bus th that was about to cross that river that he was being told by the pass passengers vuka to end it, but he was hesitant. Hesitant, yes. Yeah, he was hesitant, but because of that pressure from the passengers that were there, maybe you can give in your thoughts in regards to this. Now that the government is trying its best to promote national values, you know, uh, uh, what are your thoughts in regards to the impact of this on the society? That's what I'm saying. We hmm. still have. Uh, some way to go mm -hmm. to convince ourselves that patience is a is, is, is a value. Is a virtue. Yes, mm. it's a virtue. Patience. Mm. You see, these guys just lack the the, 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 the the virtue of being patient and waiting for the storms to come. Yeah. And incidentally, the people who come from around there know the history. They knew water, that is not a permanent river. Mm -hmm. They normally wait for about a few hours and then the water will subside and then yeah. they would have crossed safely. Mm. But because of the, the, the feeling of we must be there now, 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 now. Mm -hmm. You know, they would have lived to have a wedding, but later. But because you want to have it now and now, you know, you risk and the, the outcome is catastrophic. Yeah, yeah, and therefore, yeah. as a people, uh, that is just an example. Mm -hmm. There are so many incidents in our society that reflect very badly on us in as far as values are concerned. And so it's a moment uh, for us to, as a nation, to reflect. And uh, uh, this is what work we have cut out, uh, that we will have to reflect on who we are as a people mm -hmm. and then begin to operate differently so that mm -hmm. we can reflect the values of people who uh, are willing to wait that's why this impatience is what caused, causes people to bribe because you want to get quickly. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to, 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 to delay gratification. You want it now and here. And now you promote corruption. Yeah, you pro promote corruption. Because you want something quickly. Quickly, yes. Wow. Yeah. I'm looking at the, the uh, public participation also because the public also needs to play a role. When the, the government, county government, national government, or any institution calls upon the public to participate, we should turn out in numbers. For some people, for some cases, you know, uh, based on some reports, you know, uh, the public, those who turn up are not as many as they ought to have turned up. And sometimes you have the same regular guys turning up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry to say, but uh, the, the value of public participation is a requirement, and mm -hmm. that's why institutions would, uh, because if they don't uh, create opportunities for people to participate, they'll be yeah. sanctioned. And what they the outcome of the process will be disqualified. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the, 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 the frustration is, I don't know whether it is uh, the unwillingness on the part of Kenyans mm -hmm. or whether it is the, the environment that is created by the agencies that drive this agenda. Mm. Because we would expect that uh, if uh, for the stakeholders, every aspect, if you are coming up with a bill on, 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 on expenditure, the people in the accounting and the money sector will be important. Yes. If you are coming up on, uh, with a bill on... Uh, Let's say health. On health, uh, you'd expect that the actors in the sector of health will should turn come up. up. Yeah. But what obtains is different. You'll find the same guys came on this bill. The other one, the same guys <laughs> are coming. And that tells you something is the matter. Kenya is a funny society. Yes. That means how credible are this, and therefore mm -hmm. how credible is the input that you get. So we are just doing it for the sake of fulfilling the requirement that people came indeed and they signed in and we can see evidence. But I would think the quality of uh, participation becomes low. So it means then the conveners need to go out of their way and uh, reach out to mm -hmm. the stakeholders that are key to that area. Reach out to them beforehand, write to them, communicate to them, and invite them. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to do a notice in the newspaper because that's what the law requires. That's the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. They need to go beyond the bare minimum and they communicate directly to the stakeholders that are important and tell them. Uh, because, you know, some are uh, afraid of uh, being sanctioned, being uh, 
I mean, things not going the way they want because the public will think differently. And that's why they would want to manage, stage manage the public participation by calling certain people whose views they know in advance mm -hmm. are in agreement with what they want. All right. So we must move out, look at both sides. Then we would say, in convening this public participation forum, how did you arrive at the people to come? How did you communicate to the public? Mm -hmm. And therefore, we would want to see that way. And then before we look at the stakeholders and say, if you knew uh, there was a matter coming that touches on your area, why didn't you show up? Perhaps it's because of uh, frustration. Maybe they showed up one time and made their views and they were not taken on board. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we would want to look at this. So perhaps I think the, rele the relevant agencies should begin to look at this and then to enhance uh, this uh, value of public mm -hmm. participation so that the outcome is all representative and is owned by everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Samuel Bwananyongesa. Remember, mm -hmm. this is the final part of this series of conversation that we've had in regards uh, to national values and principles of governance. So it, this, not, this conversation did not start today, and it will not end today. Because at the end of the day, we, uh, we need to play a role, and uh, it's a step-by-step -step movement. Uh, I remember we started with uh, defining what our values. We talked about this in our previous conversations and what are the roles of uh, national values in the society. You know, we asked the question, why do we have national values and principles of governance in the constitution? Is it there? Which articles do we have? We highlighted that particular conversation. We also talked about whether there are constitutional provisions of national values there. We, we highlighted the explaining each, and we have highlighted and explained each of the 17 national values. And I remember Bonanyongesa, we talked about these uh, uh, principles and the, the, uh, we also highlighted the stakeholders, who different stakeholders are when it comes to the provisions of national values. And uh, we mentioned the public service, the uh, professional associations, the media, the private sector, the education sector, and much more. We talked about the role, and today we are talking about the role of national government and principles of uh, uh, the role of government in promoting national values and principles of govern, uh, uh, governance and its impact in the society. I hope that uh, you you'll be able to catch up this conversation in our previous, uh, you know, uh, uh, interviews that we've had before. Uh, head over to YouTube on our handle that is at Y254 channel, and you'll be able to catch up more of this conversation on national values and principles of governance. If at all there is some Something you need to find out about this issue. It is there in our previous conversations. Bonanyongesa, it's a pleasure being with you. And I want to give you f time to have a final word, uh, wrapping it all up in this conversation of national values and principles of governance. Our take home for the day as we wrap it up. Thank you, Ram. I think uh, I can say to Kenyans, and especially to young people, because this station uh, targets the young people luckily, who are our future, that uh, if we didn't get it right, and indeed we haven't scored very highly in the past, going forward we must have a different perspective. And therefore I'm making an invitation to the generation, the next generation, that we must begin to look at things differently and uh, entrench national values. Our mm -hmm. constitution is very clear that we need to realize these values. And by realizing it means we need to promote, we need to enforce these national values. And uh, as a directorate, we are happy uh, that uh, so far we have received the support we require uh, from other arms of government. But we need to bring on board the Kenyan public. We need every individual in this society to come on board and uh, first of all, impress the values. We have taken a run through the 17 national values, right from patriotism, national unity, through sharing and evolution of power, uh, through equity, through social justice, human dignity, human rights. We talk about non-discrimination, we talk about uh, inclusivity, transparency, integrity, accountability, uh, down to uh, sustainable development. And these are what should be a reflection. We said the intent of uh, national values in the constitution, one critical important uh, objective was to create a national identity. That means to say who is a Kenyan, defining the attributes of a Kenyan, a person who loves their country, who is willing to work with others in the name of national unity, who is able to participate in terms of uh, 
civic responsibility, uh, who doesn't take uh, things uh, that will hurt others. I mean, all these are the values that we are saying, and they create an identity of who we are. We also say that these values are in the Constitution because we want to enhance transparency and accountability and the management of our national resource, and there are values to that effect. We also say that we want to have sustainable development. That means we want to have development now and continue to have it. And therefore, we want to uh, stir out the resources that we have and see how we can manage this sustainably, both for the current and future generations. With mm -hmm. this objective, we all need to be on board and we want to work internally to transform our society. Transform mm -hmm. is the word. Mm -hmm. That means there must be a willingness, there must be an aspiration, and we aspire to have that kind of identity as outlined in the values. And together we can achieve this. Right? All right. Yeah. So I want to participate, I mean to invite Kenyans, and especially young people. We are the Directorate of National Cohesion and Values, domiciled at uh, the Ministry of Interior. Our offices are at X Telecom's house along as Henslas Avenue. And we have a website, uh, National Values, uh, Kenya. We want to invite that you interact with us, reach out to us, and we will be able to uh, bring you on board. We have our training programs uh, for youth, for civil society. We have our exchange programs. We have our programs for the public service, mainstreaming. I think that we have no problem and we communicate with all this. And please reach out to us with any other input and request, and we'll be happy to work with you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is uh, Buana Edward Nyongesa. It's a pleasure, my brother. Thank I you so much. It. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Asante. And that brings us to the end of this series of conversations. Remember, you can also find them on Twitter at uh, co co Cohesion Values. That is where you can be able to find us, Cohesion underscore Values uh, on Twitter. Keep engaging with us at Ram Aguko, the official station analyst at Y254 channel. The hashtag is Y in the morning. And that brings us to the end of this uh, morning conversation right here on Y in the morning in regards to this particular segment on national co cohesion and national values and principles of governance. I hope you've learned something. And remember, all of us have a role to play when it comes to promoting national values and principles of governance. What have you done so far? And what do you plan on doing as we move forward? My name is Ram Maguko. It's a pleasure being with you. A big thanks to the uh, Director of National Cohesion and Values. Uh, and, and very big thanks to them for coming to Y254 and uh, you know, empowering the youth uh, so that we can be able to better uh, you know, know how to handle ourselves coming, moving forward even to the coming general elections. This is why in the morning, let's take a short break. We'll be back in a bit. Keep it locked.